Welcome to Champ Veteran and Community Chat. I'm Kayla Alex, co-host, and I'm here with my handsome co-host. Sam Alex. And what a week, I tell you. We've been busy, busy, Very, busy week. It's a lot going on. A lot of positive things are going on, so I can't wait to share with the Yes, community. yes, yes. So much going on. Super excited. Um, what's coming down in Houston um, that is helping veterans and getting veterans uh, uh, some of the resources that they are needed. That is and, correct. That is correct. So, um, but real quick, before we move on, how's your week? It's a great week. It's a great week, and happy early birthday to you. Yay, this is my birthday week, y'all. Happy early yes, birthday. Yes, happy yes, yes. I am excited about all the great possibilities and blessings that God has for me. So I'm so grateful to be here with y'all this week, this special week for my birthday, and our son's birthday is That's right. Friday. That's right. Happy yeah. early birthday to Walter. Walter Alex. And also yes. Kim H. is celebrating his birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, Kim H. If you're out there listening, happy birthday. This is a milestone birthday for Miss H. So I hope you're having a marvelous, wonderful Wednesday and a beautiful birthday. Beautiful like you, sister, inside and out. Amen. Special shout out to Pastor Tiffany and as well as the entire staff here at St. John's. And uh, with that being said, this past weekend was phenomenal. We had, we celebrated church anniversary. Starting Friday, we had a movie night, phenomenal time. Like Pastor Tiffany said today on Amanda Sha Sapp's show today, and I recommend everyone catch Pastor Tiffany on Wednesdays on Amanda's show. Mm -hmm. She gives a little insight each week. And she mentioned how watching the little kids run around on movie night was just phenomenal. You know, we I experienced that growing up, but I think there's a lost generation of that didn't get that opportunity to just be a kid, ride your bike, community looking out for you. But we experienced that last week. It was very phenomenal. She also mentioned it was a uh, sense of calmness, peace, and um, it did. It, it did. Everyone had a wonderful time. It was food, fellowship, good times. It was. It was. Then on Saturday, Lion's Heart men got the opportunity to talk to Reverend uh, Ramal Toon on a one-on-one -on -one or one. He spoke to a small group of the men here at Lions Heart Ministry. Ramal Toon was phenomenal on Sunday with the sermon, as well as we, you know, Bread of Life, passed yes. our food to 8,000 yes. 8, 8, folks were 8, impacted. people positively impacted by the Bread of Life, St. John's Church downtown. I tell you, this church ceases to amaze me every single day. Yes, yes. It, the impact of of that is phenomenal because we, we have to do a shout out to the volunteers that, you know, I saw families coming out to volunteer. That's what it's about. It's about impacting the community, uh, staying in the solution, as Dr. King would say, stay in the solution. And men out there that are listening, my veterans and men, each morning, Lionheart does a 6.15 a.m. call it's a support call. We support each other. We encourage each other. And a shout out to uh, my brother that we got good news on on uh, his report of his health. He knows who he is. We love you, brother. And uh, so the, the importance of others stepping in and praying for you, walking beside you, uplifting you cannot be overstated. Also, October 18th, we'll have the Houston Stand Down. It's an annual event where the VA and other local resources come together to support veterans that are either without a house or a home, seeking to get additional resources or get plugged into the VA or have never been uh, with the VA. So Stand Down is coming up October the 18th. Stand by, put, save the day for now, and we'll give you more information on that as we get closer. Yes, yes. 
today's guest is phenomenal. I can't wait to uh, bring this gentleman up. Before we do that, September the 26th, tomorrow, job fair here at the on the campus of St. John's downtown. Yes. So get your resumes ready. Yes, come on down between 10 and 2 tomorrow, September 26th to St. John's downtown. What's the address? 2019 Crawford Street. Come on out and get that job you've been praying for. Yes, come on out. Come on out. Now, I'll, today's guest, this gentleman is Powerhouse. Shot. Powerhouse. So if you've ever seen some of the uh, short films and and uh, documentary type films of, of the St. John's here recently, oftentimes when we're at church, they'll have a segment that is shown. And when you see the production of those short films or commercials or PSA, so to speak, they you, they are so thought provoking. They yes. they they're emotional, and they're they're yeah. done that way because it's 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 to show the true heart of St. John's downtown. Yeah. So our today's guest is the reason why they're so impactful. This gentleman is a graduate of U Uni University of Southern California's Film uh, School, USC, and really that's basically the gold standard of film in America. You know, you think about all the greats, and he'll share that later, that have come from that school. Uh, he is part of that of that branch, so to speak. He's part of that lineage. And so we're so excited to have Mr. Vincent Powell oh, with us. So give it up for oh, Vincent Powell. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here welcome, with you all. Thank welcome, you all. Thank welcome, welcome. You're so kind. You're so kind. <laughs> Shout out to the crew. Mr. Vincent. <laughs> You just came back from a cruise. I did. With the kids and I the did. wife. I did. I remember we took our kids on their first cruise. Was it 2008? Long time ago. They were kids. And so <laughs> when they came back home, they didn't make beds. They left plates yeah. on the yeah. table and stuff. Yeah. And we was like, uh, Mr. Good Day, our waiter, is not here. We sure. are not on the cruise. Sure. You go back to making a bed up. This is not this, the resort. <laughs> this is not this is it. Not that resort. So how was your kids when they returned home? Yeah, this morning, my three-year-old, as I was walking out the door, uh, said, uh, Daddy, I have a secret to tell you. Tell Mommy that I'm ready for another cruise. <laughs> and uh, uh, the face that, that I had was like, you you know what? Like, how <laughs> dare you <laughs> appreciate and, and, and always the funny thing is uh when we got home you know you're unpacking and, and trying yes. to get ready for the, the week and my my five-year-old is running around the house uh, just getting back to his to-do list daddy you said we were going to x and you said we were going to y and i'm like dude i just we just went out of the world and i yeah yeah like give me a break my boy please but they have no sense of any of it they they enjoyed themselves there they have no fiduciary responsibility to understand any of the financials that went into it. They, exactly. They they just know it was fun, and and it's it's no different than going to Granny's house. Apparently, it's, <laughs> apparently it's free. <laughs> Simple, just let's go. And then on the on the ship, my, one of my favorite memories was my five year old heard the waiter. Um, he was going around, and uh, his name was Mark, and he was asking our orders, and he heard somebody asked if they want the combo. And when it got to Milo, my five-year-old, he says, yeah, I want gumbo. And I said, he he didn't say gumbo. I'm like, put, put your Texas back, go, put that Texas right back in that bag. That man did not say gumbo. This, there is no gumbo on this ship. Do not do that to yourself. Do not expect that. That is not what we're I bet the waiter was intrigued. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. If, if he knew what it was, I'm sure. Well, we're going to go on break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about your upcoming project. Oh, awesome. Can't wait. Stay tuned to the amazing 102.5 FM. And welcome back to Veterans Community Champ Veteran Community and Chat. I'm Kayla Alex, co host, and I'm here with my handsome co host, Sam Alex. And we left off with Mr. Vincent Powell, our guest today. And he is a phenomenal film producing director, you name it. 
coming out of the great USC University of Southern California, California Film School. By way of the Texas Southern University. Absolutely. Whoop, whoop, my and, the HBCU. Absolutely. and a little known did you know, Brother Powell was the first student out of Texas Southern University accepted in the SC film school yeah. and graduate. So yeah, he's a, he's a uh, trailblazer. I'm grateful. Yes, I'm yes. grateful. So we were talking on break about sacrifice and, sure. and things sure. like that. So getting through SC was a major milestone coming yeah. out of TSU undergrad. Sure. So what was that? What did that look like for your family? Yeah, it, it was uh, the, the first part is being someone that born and raised in Houston, Texas, you 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 love home. You you you've been there. I went off to UNT and then uh, went there with the same exuberance I, I had, and realized very quickly the difference between college and high school, and realized that just because you're the socialite does not mean that these professors care. And so uh, they gave me the grades I earned and not what I felt like I deserved. Uh, and so I was put on academic probation and uh, wound up uh, suspended from. Uh, UNT, even though I was hosting the news, running a Bible study, founded a new black actors division, I was working for the vice president of student affairs, I was the treasurer of the um, of the, the Hall Association, none of that mattered. Wow. I wound up with a, a 0 0.9 GPA. And so my parents, of course, like come home and I made the decision to uh, go to TSU because of Dr. Freeman and the uh, debate yes. team and traveled the world with him. And Legacy. Became uh, the 2010 international champion in Berlin, Germany of uh, debate, which was the first title in almost 10 years that the school had brought home. And Congrats. Thank you. And and it's 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 funny because you you don't realize that you're written into the annals of time across around the globe, right? And so I, I meet people that talk about forensics and, and when you start the little jibber and jabber and you realize Oh, I, I've, I've actually done some things. Uh, it, it does become impressive in conversations. And so I did that. And then uh, I was youth pastoring at the time. I was doing some media direction for, for different churches. And I was also in my own world trying to develop my voice, my, my look, my feel. What do I want to say in the earth? Which was a, a conundrum to be in because you're trying to figure out what you want to say as a speaker, as a, as a pastor. But you're also trying to figure out uh, in the secular space or in the marketplace, what do I want to say visually that makes me relevant there as well? I always uh, wrestled with this idea that I, I wanted to sing your pastor, and but I also love cameras and lights and sound. And my my dad, uh, David Powell, always would would remind me in in a fatherly way to uh, focus on the thing that you can only grab right now. Church will be there later is what he would tell me and uh and my mother would would be the referee in the, in the go, those conversations those colorful conversations you know you, you, yes. you've had a teenager before oh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> those, those colorful teenage conversations and uh i, I was like no you know i want to i want to do it all and you learn how to temper your passions and and focus on this thing for this season and that thing for that season Amen. so uh I shortly uh after the, the TSU stint met my wife um, and uh, Pastor Rudy uh, walked myself and, and my wife through a very uh, different season that we had when some opportunities were on the table to pastor and some other opportunities to um, to just move into more of a full time ministry. It was one of those things where my wife and I had these very serious conversations. Her parents are pastors. She's part of a church plant. She's been a worship leader all her life. She's like, hey, boy, I didn't marry you to be with my dad. Like, I, I'm not down with this whole thing. And at first I was like, oh, no, babe, but this is what I, what I want to do. And it took a moment to realize, uh, and, and some wiser conversation from married people, that if, if one of the spouses are saying no, it's not something for the time. Because the two walking together, except they agree, Amen. matters with Amen. the ring as well. It does, yes, having sir. the ring does not just mean that there's always agreement, mm -hmm. right? You have to find those moments where you still agree and you still acquiesce and you still lean into this person for this season so they can lean into you the next season. Ebb and flow. Yes, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. it's really this literal, um, this, this movement, that, this dance that you find out. People always talk about balance and and it's like there is no balance when when life is coming at you and you got kids and there's hormones and there's bills and there's credit score and it's it's rhythm 
it's figuring out in this season what the tempo is. Yes. As the DJ turns the, the turntable, what, what, what's the dance we're doing? And so uh, we, we, we moved into a place where we were doing more creative work and she was still teaching all along. And I was like, I think I'm gonna go to, to school in LA. And so I applied. Uh, and by this point, this is my third time applying. I didn't get in the first two times. And uh, I pl- we got married, I applied. And I, res- I respect your resiliency. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, it's, it was also a bit of uh, ignorance because I realized that in some cases, well, in all cases, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good, finds thing. good thing, obtains favor. Amen. And that goes laterally. So it was once I was married that I actually got in. <laughs> it was once I was married that I actually stopped thinking so critically about myself because I had someone that affirmed me and Amen. so the less I worried about the resume and the real and the way it looked and the way it felt the more liberated I was to just be myself mm-hmm. and it was that version of me that USC accepted yeah. uh, and not the version of me that was trying to be somebody else yeah. or trying to figure myself out and so uh, and, and, and in that the decision to go to USC Ryan Coogler had just dropped uh, Fruitville Station with Michael B. Jordan and you're, you're hearing these great things that are happening with Melody Hobson, and uh, who's the, the wife of uh, George Lucas. George Lucas is a grad of USC, and George Lucas writes this big multi-million dollar check to USC for diverse students to be yes, admitted sir. and get scholarships. And so it's like, hey, all these signs are pointing to this opportunity. Let's do it. John Singleton is a graduate of USC, and uh, uh, Shonda rest Rhimes. In, rest in power. Rest in power, indeed. I, I had the, the beautiful privilege of, of um, being with him multiple times. Uh, once I got to USC and being able to, we, we were on an all white yacht party for homecoming together. And, uh, and I say together, I was wow. holding the camera, shooting BTS <laughs> of, of all the other Anthony Hamiltons and everybody else that's you, there. You were in the room. You know, I was, and that's all that matters. That's all that matters. And that's all that because so proximity does it, right? So, uh, but, but yeah, I, I run into to, to Mr. Singleton a lot. He comes speak. And then I had the, the ultimate honor of uh, uh, producing and, and directing his uh, memorial service held at USC. And it was an amazing, uh, amazing uh, day that was, um, you know, it's, it, it really humanizes everybody once you realize these people that you're looking up to, the Sam Jacksons and the Courtney B. Vance and Viola Davis and all these people that are there to honor him. And they're just recognizing a friend. Yeah. You know, they're not, yes. they're not there looking at the IMDb page and the star meter. If this guy was somebody that mattered. And what encouraged me about his story is that he graduated from USC with a script that he had written and uh, had already brokered a deal by graduation to make a small film called Boys in the Hood. And wow. the he walks across stage and he yells expletive at his classmates because he's like, I'm out and I, I got I got the deal. You know, y'all y'all were laughing at this script. Y'all y'all were talking about this story. Mm-hmm. And it's become a, a classic. 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 People, people classic. call it a hood classic. It is yes. a classic in cinema. Classic. Yes, yes. That, uh, we it's a talk snapshot about. in time of what oh, it was like. It's, it's a history it, lesson. And it's, it's, it's the deserved pieces of, of story that uh, only black people can tell about themselves. And we find a lot of times that uh, stories, as diverse as they are, sometimes the person pinning the story is not of the same background or ethnicity or orientation as the person they're writing about. Mm-hmm. And so you find movies that explode like uh, Hidden Figures or The Help or Blindside that are written by these white men who didn't really live this experience. They heard about it, read a book, and felt they could make it more cinematic. Mm-hmm. But there's something that is tangible when you uh, read words written by somebody with the experience, when you watch the film directed by someone with the experience. And that's why we remember Ricky dying. And that's why yes. we can still feel yes. those scenes and see the palm trees. And the, it was John yes. Singleton, his singular well, touch. Well, hold that thought. This is a very interesting conversation that we want to pick back up and discuss further. And I have some questions for you around um, black upcoming directors and playwrights and things like that. So stay tuned to the amazing 102.5 FM hosted by the Bread of Life. Thank you for coming back and listening to 
Chance Veteran Community and Chat. I'm Kayla Alex. I'm Sam Alex. And we're here with our special guest, Visit Powell. Hey, hey. And Visit talked a little bit about his experience and journey through from Texas Southern University, moving to on and get receiving his master's from USC Film School and what that was like and some of the sacrifices uh, he and his wife made as a family to where he is today, yeah. which is a giant right now in okay. the industry and so we are so elated to have you with us we talked about black giving black directors mm -hmm. and filmmakers opportunities to tell our story yeah because our our history is so ingrained in us from the time, from the womb to now, you mm -hmm. know, we've been taught uh, our history by our family. Sure. It's not taught in school, right. but it is taught at home. And um, one of my girlfriends I went to high school with, and we always knew she would be phenomenal. Her name is Angela Rice, and she is a playwright, and she's right. done great things. And right now she is... She has written a play about Camp Logan, and Sam was found on that a little bit. And her play is coming up November 16th, and she's telling it from a story to make the audience critically think. Yeah. And what would you do in that moment? And I'll turn that over to Sam, and he could talk about Camp Logan so that our audience can envision sure. what that critical thinking is during that time. Well, we know Camp Logan, which is now Memorial Park. Yeah. Uh, during World War One, it was a camp, and think about then that was considered out of town. When you mm -hmm. think about downtown use, and that was a long way, probably a day trip. But uh, so a woman of color, a black woman, was being assaulted by the police, and so the word got back to soldiers on Camp Logan, uh, and they came to her rescue. As a result of that, some people died. And the county or the police in place just did a dragnet. Anyone that maybe they thought was involved were all prosecuted and some were eventually uh, executed. And so Sheila Jackson Lee, rest in power, in power uh, was part of the Congress team to get them pardoned after all of these years, nice. over 100 years later. Yeah. Nice. And so, but again, about storytelling. I think there is a space, yes. Vincent, for storytelling from our community, and I think we're on the cusp of that here in Houston. Yeah, it's it's important because the the whole Juneteenth thing has been really uh, interesting because growing up, again, it's something that you knew about offline, right? Your parents talked about it, your family, you know, we had cookouts for Juneteenth. Yes. I knew about it. And so it was really a shocker when I realized others didn't know about it. And, but it's also the, the fine thing that Denzel Washington talks about when he says why it wouldn't have been appropriate for him to direct Schindler's List and why, you know, Steven Spielberg had to be the one to do it. Powerful because interview. Because legacy has to be the thing that comes up. So Denzel Washington gives this uh, analogy of you could give Steven Spielberg and, and me my grandmother's chicken recipe or fried chicken recipe, but only one of us knows what it's supposed to taste like. And in that same sense, you can give two people the same script, you can give two people the same location, two people the same actors, and if you don't know what something is supposed to sound like, you criticize it. When I was at USC, one of my second or third semester, I had a short film, at the very end of the film, a brother and a sister, black in the South. They look at each other and the brother says to the sister, you're still ugly. And the credits start to roll and she pushes them and they laugh. And one of my professors, who was very endearing and, and good uh, intended, he, he, he stopped it when we were screening it in class. He said, Vincent, you've got to take this out. It's so disparaging. She's a beautiful woman. She, she's, a, she's a beautiful woman. She, you, you cast a great actress. Why would you make that line of dialogue happen in this script? If you take it out, it would be fine. If you leave it in there, I'm not going to give you an A. And I looked at the couple of black people in the classroom, and I was like, I'm not taking it out. That's how we shoot the dozens with yes, our siblings. That's our endearing. That is, that is our, Baker. absolutely. Yes, yes. And so, but, but because you're unaffiliated and because you're, you're not adjacent to it, 
you're taking it literally and not hearing what's not being said within it. And so it's those types of small examples that always remind me of why we have to tell stories and even to your, your classmate to be able to tell this amazing story. I always tell my students at Texas Southern that every time a black person decides to write a story, tell a story, show a story, it's all protest to a superstructure that never intended for you to be literate enough to write, to read, to depict the truth of your existence. And so hats off to her for telling the hometown story. And like you said, it was out of town at that point, <laughs> but it's a hometown story and it's, it's, uh, it's being told from the perspective of a woman about the re reaction to an assault of a black woman. And I think that when we take the authority and, and the intentionality back of what our stories are, that is where the richness of uh, real storytelling is, is yes. in the breaking of, of the pretend to blurring the line into making your audience forget for a split second that nothing they're watching is reality. Wow. I tell you, there's a lot of... <laughs> There's a lot of military history that we have as a people sure. that has not been told. Yeah. And I really believe that we need a voice or someone to tell our stories because our young men and women serve just as well Absolutely. and in excellence like everyone else sure. but oftentimes their stories aren't being told or it's being told from another A skewed perspective and yes. and, and the, the the reality is as uh african americans black people all all these things our patriotism beyond uh a flag is the decision to stay and then the ultimate decision to fight for the country and then the, the pinnacle decision to risk our lives and lay our lives down for a country that did not see us as equal for yes. a, a millennia, right? Yes. And so when you when you talk about black military history and you know the, the red tails and Tuskegee Airmen and, and just all of these different uh, iterations of where black people were put on the front line or had hands in decisions that were made or entire battalions or regiments that were forgotten about and not correctly written about and enslaved people that had to fight on the wrong side of the Civil War because they were at the mercy of their slave master and they still thought those stories are rich and those stories of rebellion and of uprising just for the thought that I too believe in this country and that's why August Wilson had to write I too sing America he yes. says I sit in the kitchen when company comes but I eat and I grow well and, and and tomorrow they'll see how beautiful I am and we're still waiting for tomorrow sometimes but the the real uh, trick and the real conscious decision is to stop waiting for the applause of all and let ourselves be the audience we're creating for but as long as we're fighting for the Oscar award when we don't make up a good portion of those that vote as long as we're fighting for the Golden Globe when we don't make up a good portion of the decision makers as long as we that is if that's the ultimate thing that we reach for and I'm not saying that none of the films I make do I aspire to do that but if that's the ultimate thing and I'm not thinking about my wife being proud and my mother being proud and my father being proud and my kids being proud of the work I've done and letting their regard of what I'm doing matter more than a little statuette, that is where the difference is in doing this for fun and doing this to really make make a real change in the world. Yes, yeah, yeah, le yeah, legacy. I, absolutely. Legacy. Because they're watching. Absolutely. They're little ones. And they're matters. watching. It matters. Three and five. It matters. Absolutely. And, 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 and this morning I was putting my shoes on and my son, uh, my wife uh, is amazing. She's a producer. She's uh, working with Sarah Jakes Roberts at Woman Evolve. So she left town this morning to go oh help gosh. out in Dallas with the Woman Evolve conference. And so I'm a single parent for three days. <laughs> and so she left her to-do list and my, my son comes in today. He said, I thought you were taking me to school today. I said, well, no, mommy's about to uh, take you. And he says, where are you going today? Are you going to make another movie? And I was like, no, man, I'm just going to TSU to teach. And he said, oh, okay, well, when's your next movie coming out? And, and he, he knows we're editing a short film. It's called Today I Cried. It'll be out soon. Follow yes. me on social media, Vincent Powell. Uh, we'll be dropping that soon. It's a love letter to black men. And we'll but, put that in the link. Absolutely. Absolutely. But he, he just knows the fact that he's even aware remotely that that is what daddy's passionate about proves that he's watching. Yes. Wow. 
As we go to break, y'all, give it up again for our guest today, I'm Vincent Powell, graduate of Texas Southern University and SC Film School. And glad we came back to TSU to be a professor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Came back to give yeah. back to the community. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for y'all. Thank you for being here. We'll put how you can reach Brother Powell in the description. Sure. Stay with us. We're 102, the amazing 102.5, powered by the bread of life. I'm Sam with my beautiful wife, Kayla. We'll see you after break. And welcome back to Champ Veteran Community and Chat. I'm Kayla Alex, co-host with my handsome co-host. Sam Alex. And we have our extended champ family here, Barbara and Rodney Owens. Give Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. When, when you think about St. John's, and the reason why Kayla and I are members of St. John's, uh, part, part of that, the main ingredient of that was the invitation by Rodney and Barbara uh, to invite us and, and when I, we did my internship. So mm -hmm. thank you all. Yes. We wouldn't be here without your yes. Yes. invitation. And so they're here today because Sam and I will be out next week. We're traveling. And if our mission at CHAMP is about wellness, resetting, recharging we can't just talk about it we must walk the walk amen. right amen and so we're taking a little respite a little time off but we also are going to be doing some work out there because we have some um veterans that are interested in starting a a, a champ leg in thailand so we'll mm -hmm. be going out there Hosting a couple of socials, we we're probably gonna do some um, video uh, out there as well to do to to show on the show to have on. That the is show. correct. That yes. is correct. And also keep in mind that the community still needs great information, and they still need even when we're not in the area, we owe it to our community of listeners to continue getting good information that they can use. So I think Amanda Sapp for this platform. I think Bread of Life for this platform. Yes. And Rodney and Barbara, you all represent St. John's downtown so well. Tell us a little bit about your background. The audience probably know you, but, but share with us what you do over at Pathway to Serenity and the impact you're making with your ministry at Pathway. Thank you so much, Sam. Yes, my name is Rodney Owens, and uh, I'm the co-founder of Pathway to Serenity. We are a residential uh, treatment center, substance abuse facility for men and veterans. And we started this ministry. The state of Texas says we have to call it a, a rehab or substance abuse, but it's really our ministry. It's something we've been called to do Amen. to help uh, men uh, transform their life. I'm a person in long-term recovery, so I, I come with... 27 years of experience of that men do recover men can begin to live a healthier life amen so over 14 years ago barbara and i uh she entrusted me with this vision and um we decided to open up uh, pathway to serenity and we just we began partnering uh together uh doing god's work helping men to recover and it's been a great journey uh one of the neat things is that, you know, we work together side by side, uh, doing this this work to help men uh, become better better citizens, better better fathers, uh, better uh, community leaders, and not only that, uh, we we also uh, the other component we bring them to St. John's to get the spiritual side of of this uh, of our program. So it, it's it's been an amazing journey uh, for the last 14 years, Sam and. And, and along that note, that journey, we have met some amazing people. Yes, sir. God has put some amazing people, and uh, they're sitting to the right of us. Oh, thank uh, the you. Alex, so thank we were you. grateful for that. Thank, thank you, Rodney and Barbara. Thank I, I, uh, the film that our last guest did for the church anniversary, I saw several brothers from Pathway to Serenity in the film, <laughs> and it just brought so much joy to my heart because, you know, 
St. John's is a place of, for love and healing. And so this show, this program is about that. It's yeah. about hope, love, healing. We talk about solutions on this show. There's plenty of podcast programs that talk about the problem. We're here to discuss solutions. And you two epitomize that yes. with your work. Barbara, what is some of the takeaways from your experience working with men at Pathway and their families? I have always um, been amazed at the men at Pathway because I always consider them as family. They could easily be a brother or uncle or, you know, something, someone, you know, in my family and I always um, treat them the way I want to be treated. I always look at them just, you know, uh, individuals that need help like everybody else, you know, just need help. And I just understand their, uh, what they're going through and I understand that it's not an overnight, you know, process or anything like that to, to heal. And the main ingredient, you know, for healing is love because I feel like, you know, the love that we have here mm -hmm. at St. John's or we share among each other at St. John. St. John's and then the love that you know we share with the guys at Pathway it's just amazing because they know we care about them they just not you know they're individuals and and I know sometimes they probably don't feel that way based on what they've gone through but that's one thing that we that I definitely take away that they're you know just individuals that made some bad decisions sure. in their life and some of us you know we all do but you know I have to understand that you know I love them no matter what no matter yeah. what, Sam, because yes. they are are just trying their best to do the right thing one day at a time. One day at a time. You touched on something. St. John's, and, and I know through Mr. Owens, I was introduced to Pastor Rudy on an intimate level. And Pastor Rudy mentioned something about sitting next to people. That was his famous. Remember that story, Miss mm -hmm. Owens? Right. How did it go? Well, well, early on, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Rudy, uh, just this amazing guy. Uh, I was telling Vincent on, on, on the interview how I met him, how how it all connected. Uh, and so he used to talk about if you might be sitting on the left hand side to someone that hadn't bathed, haven't had housing for months, you might be sitting on the other side of a millionaire. So if you have an issue with sitting to that homeless person, maybe this is not the church for you. And I always, that always resonated mm -hmm. with me, you know, because we all have been through some stuff. Yes, sir. Yes. You yes, know, sir. You know, that was my story. There was weeks I didn't bathe. Yeah. You know, yeah. thank God uh, for the for the change and, and yes. be finding a better way to live. Yes, sir. Yes. It wasn't that, you know. I didn't know how. <laughs> that wasn't important at that point in my life. <laughs> Bathing. No, that wasn't important. You had other priorities. I had other priorities, you know. And I had to get out and get them. And that's so, what recovery does. It helps yeah. reprioritize. Exactly. Our exactly. lives. And a, yeah. and a more manageable, I think, right. the blue book. Right. The big book. The big book. Little it blue book. The little blue book. <laughs> With a lot of information. With a lot know, of information. To help men to recover, you know. And so... That's always been, been, been the foundation here at St. John's, you know. Um, we don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody is welcome. Yes, yes. yes. And yeah. go to work. If you come to do, if you want to make impact in the community, this is fertile oh, ground right 2019 here. Crawford. 2019, <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. And, and, and something else, uh, Mr. O, you all are excellent co-hosts for, for us while we're on holiday and doing outreach and overseas because your love man your genuine care and concern unconditional positive regard as i learned going through mental health stuff and so it's so folks out there support mr and mrs owens next week here when they take over for kayla and i 5 p.m to 6 p.m central standard time because you're in great hands i'm i'm i'm, a, I'm the product of their love and support they helped the young intern <laughs> <laughs> about 12, 13, 14, many years ago, get acclimated to working with men in, in the era of recovery. So you gave me an opportunity, and, uh, and I've, I've, we've been very grateful ever yes, since. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and we entrust veterans who are sent to us to CHAMP 
when they are in need and when they have their moment of clarity of wanting to um, seek a better life, we entrust our vets to a uh, pathway to serenity. So, Mr. and Mrs. Owen, as we wrap, you'll have two folks to interview next week. We'll have uh, the Providence Outreach Ministry. You know, they are getting ready to do their annual event for um, outreach for trafficking, human trafficking. They work in those spaces. So uh, we'll talk more about that. And then also Reuben Lewis. I think, Brother Vincent, you know Reuben, who's a, who's an aspi he's a filmmaker as well. And so he'll be in next week uh, to be your guest. So with that being said, thank you for joining us today. We love you. Kaylee, you want to take us out? Yes, thank you for listening to Champ Veteran Community Chat. As we close out this week, we pray that you have an amazing week, the rest of this week, and see you when we get back in two weeks, but you come back next week for the Owens as they <laughs> host Champ Veteran Community Chat here, right here at the amazing 102.5 FM, hosted by the Bread of Life. Take care. God bless. God bless.